On September 1, 1939, the Nazi Blitzkrieg stormed into Poland and began its brutal occupation. One week later, Oskar Schindler, 31 years old, arrived in Krakow as an agent for the Abwehr, the German intelligence organization. His disarming smile, quick wit, and ability to disguise a bribe as a gift of friendship helped make all the right connections. He didn't go into World War II thinking, I'm going to save Jews and be a hero. He went into it thinking, I'm going to make a lot of money and be set for life. The Krakow that Schindler came to exploit was a bustling industrial city with a thriving Jewish community, 66,000 in all. But when Hitler's armies invaded Poland, the Jews of Krakow, as well as Poland's other three and a half million Jews, were soon set apart from the rest of society. The Nazis decreed that all Jews, over the age of 10, wear the Star of David, a Jewish icon. The Nazis followed a very specific pattern, which was to take the population that was defined as Jews, to isolate them, to stigmatize them, to confiscate their assets, and to make it impossible for them to continue with a normal human life and to exploit their assets. Schindler witnessed Nazis evicting Jews from their apartments at will, herding them into ghettos, then moving into their vacant residences. The Nazis also took over their businesses, retaining Jewish workers as slave labor. Schindler had the full privileges of a Nazi, and he understood he could benefit from the Jews' misfortune. He began inquiring about a formerly Jewish-owned factory on the outskirts of Krakow. On the advice of Itzhak Stern, a Jewish accountant he'd met, Schindler decided to take over the factory with Stern running the books. Schindler was convinced he could acquire lucrative military contracts by producing field kitchenware and mess kits for German soldiers. From their first meeting, Schindler and Stern formed an immediate bond. When Schindler turned their conversation to the war, to the rampant killing, to religion, Stern saw an opening to plant a seed. He expressed a fine point of Talmudic wisdom. He who saves a single life saves the world entire. The remark was not lost on Schindler. Schindler purchased the factory from the bankruptcy court of Krakow. He borrowed 50,000 zlotis, the equivalent of $10,000 from several wealthy Jews who realized the Nazis would get their money sooner or later. They took their chances on Schindler. DEF, Deutsche Emil Fabrik, known by its workers as Emilia for short, soon became quite a success. Schindler, the operator, made the deals. Behind the scenes, he relied on his staff. Schindler had the business sense and the heart to treat his Jewish laborers humanely, often with a smile, a joke, or an unexpected kindness. He came to my workstation and called me by my name and uh, occasionally asked me things, not because he wanted to really have the information, but he just wanted to make human contact with somebody like me, 13 years old. And then I'd find out the following day that when I went to get my ration of soup, that I was supposed to get two rations, because Schindler had ordered double ration for me. That's the kind of person he was. There was even more compelling evidence of the fact that Schindler was different from the other Nazis. He warned his Jews of upcoming auctions, calculated incidents in which the Gestapo would terrorize and kill Krakow's Jews. A kind of covenant developed between Oskar Schindler and his prisoners. It was a very rough covenant, but it basically said, you run my factory and keep things chugging over, and I'll keep the dogs and the jackboots and the lash and the rifle off the factory floor. 
As a result, Amalia earned a reputation as a haven from Nazi brutality. Krakow's Jews sought to work there, and Schindler was all too eager to accommodate them. For taking on more Jews made good economic sense. Although the Jews themselves weren't paid, Schindler still had to send their wages to the SS. But at just six marks a day, about two dollars a piece, Jewish labor was a better deal than higher-priced Polish workers.